Starting now, must two steps to master quant for cat. Okay, I'm going to say, look, what is the pattern in which you should study? What is the sequence in which you should go? Then what are the attitude you should carry while you're preparing for this exam? And so sequence, always, always. I'm a gigantic fan of starting with arithmetic. Arithmetic is a big deal. It's an elephant in the room. It can move you way past section cutoff. It can give you a certain comfort level with numbers and ideas before you go on for tougher battles. You take arithmetic. You put it in the bag, you feel very confident about these 10 12 topics, then you move the show to the next step. Now, what are the topics when I or do I refer to when I say arithmetic? Percentages and profit and loss, right? speed, time, distance, and races, ratios, proportions, and mixtures, pipe systems and work time, simple interest, compound interest, uh, basic linear quadratic equation. Even though it is algebra, I would use the basics here, averages. Little bit of exponents and logarithm, little bit of progressions. So, so eight, ten topics completely, three, four, half and half. You take this, put into the bag, consolidate this, grab this intuitively. If somebody says, oh, this, uh, this GDP has fallen by 20%, then you should be like, oh, it was four-fifth of what it started with. What it began, what it is now, ratio is five is to four. Thinking fraction, ratio, percentage, change, should all come naturally, intuitively. Work on that obsessively they're very comfortable with it right? after this there are kind of three big chunks to chase one is algebra other is geometry other is number systems and modern math three big big chunks what is there in algebra you start with linear quadratic equation you do inequalities functions progressions sequences that part maybe a little bit of polynomials bunch of x's and y's sitting here what is there in geometry geometry triangle circle quadrilateral all of that Trigonometry, mensuration, coordinate geometry. What is there in kind of number system? Number system factors, factorial, HCF, LCM, reminders, all of that. Permutation, combination, probability, leading into that. Load up a little bit of set theory. This is the third, third part. There will be a bunch of miscellaneous topics like clocks and calendars and binomial, which you can opt in and opt out or add somewhere along the line. And so these are the three parts to do after arithmetic. In this, my preferred second part is geometry because of the weightage that can come to it and also the fact that geometry is a blocking thing. Without doing geometry, you cannot meaningfully do trigonometry, mensuration, coordinate geometry. So if you don't do geometry, these three can't be done and all four put together can become, can look big. So attack that, then algebra, then this. But this order is left to you. Some people can't think shapes, they're very happy dealing with x's and y's. Some people hate x's and y's, but they love circles and quadrilaterals. Depending on your preference, we are towards one or the other, but definitely put arithmetic in the bag. Arithmetic in the bag, locked and consolidated, put to bed. We keep revisiting arithmetic, it's not locked and completely done, but do it as close to completely done as possible, then move to the next thing. So your scoring section, this is your anchor, this is your support structure, fail safe, whatever you call it. You, you build cat preparation sitting on the throne called arithmetic and then reach for the stars. So arithmetic is what you've got to put in the bag first and foremost, beautifully, wonderfully, before you go chasing anything else. And of the other three, any order is fine. My preferred order would be arithmetic, geometry, algebra, number systems and PNC. That's a sequence, but that is incidental. You don't have to get, get, uh, get consumed by that. And so, um, how should you do this? Uh, learn from first principles. Uh, very, very, very important. If you're learning percentages, 20% up, 20% down, one-fifth up, one-fifth down. If one fifth up, it becomes six fifth. That means the ratio is going to be five is to six. I, profit and loss, understand fractions, decimals, everything. Ratio, proportion, mixtures, and allegations. Know why this allegation method works. Why is it this weird cross different thing? What is the funda behind that? Can I see the proof of that? Okay, every idea or nugget that you have, uh, figure out mechanisms of asking questions on why does this work? It's particularly true for geometry and number system. Geometry, I know you've all heard of this thing. Friend. Sum of three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Very nice, almost all of us. Uh, have, all of us have learned it at some point of time. 90% of us will be able to recall it when it is said, oh yeah, I've heard this before. I'm sure all of you are nodding your head and think, yeah, yeah, my teacher told me this. I remember this. I've used it a million times. So, but I'm also sure. Uh, less than 10% of us know the proof for this. The proof is beautiful. Proof opens your mind up. 
so if you're starting early on, then you have the time to dwell on the proofs. They're not going to ask you on the proofs. I'm not being silly here. I'm not saying you'll get two more marks in your exam because you know the proof of this. But understanding and appreciating the proof of this, having a smile on your face and saying, oh, this proof was nice, will, will open up your mind to different, different ways of thinking. You'll read more and more proofs. That will help you solve questions. And all of you, prob many of you, not all of you, probably know how, what is the test of divisibility by four. Why if you are given a 15 digit number, finding whether the number is divisible by 4 or not is very easy. Just, just very simple. Take the last two digits, you're done. 1658934612412. This is number divisible by 4? Yes, it is. Why? Last two digits is 1, 2. 12 is a multiple of 4. This thing is a multiple of 4. Very nice. But why? Why does the test of divisibility by 4 work? If you go through that, if you figure out the proof or you look at that proof, you'll be like, now I know what is the funda begin test of divisibility by 8, test of divisibility by 16. I can tell you what will be a beautiful test of divisibility by 125. I know this stuff. You will join all those dots and then math becomes more beautiful, more fun. And the overall scheme of things, it starts making more sense. And the topics get interconnected beautifully. The, the, the subject lights up. Right? It's a crime that we don't do enough of this, at least not enough of it. To satisfy me, <laughs> right? so I would want a ton of our things to be about exploring why the test of divisibility by four works, and not on on writing down five, five numbers and saying which of these are multiples of four. This is a silly end of mathematics that we learn in our system. The the, the more fun part is what we what we leave. And, but hey, they're not letting me set the syllabus in the pedagogy. They should, but they're not letting me. If they did, they do wonders for uh, for our kids. Anyway, at least I like to believe that I would do wonders for our kids. And so keep that, that curiosity about first principles open endlessly. Now, some people, when they enjoy the first principles part, they sometimes end up underestimating the grind part. I'm sure you've all heard some version of this. No uh, question, what I love Andrew. You do 100 questions, you'll get this. 50 bar, yehi karo, ho jayega. 100 bar, karo, aa jayega. I'm sure, I, mean, I don't know other languages, but I'm sure every one of us in all our native tongues have heard this. You do this a hundred times, it will fall in place in your head. There is value to this. Autopiloting your processes is very important. You do quadratic equations, you do hundred of them, the hundred and first one, you are doing it without your brain really pushing itself. It's very important when you fight tougher and tougher battles because you won't get tired. Otherwise, it's a tiring exam. And so, if you watch sport, you'll realize that some people are concentrating so hard in the moment and act of doing their things that they're vulnerable to making a mistake because you, their brain can't hold that on, that intensity. Then you have some others for whom this thing comes so naturally. It just, they just do the movement, either the bat or with their feet. Think about, think about cricket or football. They've done it a million times. That muscle kicks in the faint kicks in automatically. And so it's, 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 it's as if they were born to do this. Several of them are. And there is a certain relief and joy that comes from automating so many processes that their brain can think about patterns on the field and gaps on the ground and all of that. And so you'll have bandwidth for that only after you've automated this. So that grind of doing a million questions without thinking, look, it's a big deal, is super important. Get that also in the back. Fundas are important, grind is also important. Final lap as ever in all of this after you've done a bunch of topics is take mocks and, and fine tune and get better. But uh, preparation plan wise, arithmetic first, then one of the other three, then the second one, then the third one. Template wise, appreciation of fundamentals and first principles with a sense of joy and learning something new and a smile on your face, super crucial. Gritting through 100 questions and grinding through and building your brain muscle to automatically do a bunch of things. Super important. Then wrapping everything up and attacking the mocks, that's the final. And so, um, think of it as a, as a fun exercise, not something that you have to fir se yehi karna type thing. Because sooner or later, the, the outcomes will rear their head. What are my chances of getting into an I am Cody code or I am Tichy? I'll be super happy to get I am Cal. I'll settle for I am Indoor. I hope I can get into one of the top 25. All of those thoughts will come. I have so much riding on it. Uh, my, my parents firmly believe I can crack it. All my friends think I'm a rock star. 
my relatives hate me all categories of thoughts will come in your head and and, and the, the, the the angst natural anxiety and stress of preparing for a competitive exam also creep in and so they, they all come as much as possible you have to keep them at bay and the easiest way to do it is to enjoy the damn thing that you're doing or that you've signed up for i shouldn't say damn thing when i'm saying enjoy pardon my language but enjoy this wonderful thing that you've signed up for so embrace wholeheartedly the idea that you're going to you're going to enjoy learning these things they're fun believe me they're fun i've been i've learned them a lot of time i've been teaching it for 10 years very often people ask me saying don't you get bored teaching the same stuff over and over again and so i don't i'm not teaching the same stuff over and over again we want to reinvent our content our pedagogy dramatically to any which way i'm not regurgitating crap i'll go back and look at a million proofs and ways of reimagining things and thinking about them differently i enjoy the interaction with students and the, the new things that they come up with so it's the, the, the percentages and profit and loss are the same but within that if you look hard enough there are a million things to appreciate and enjoy all the time and so so figure out ways of grappling with that and and, and having fun with that super important for this channel best wishes Thank you.